What's up guys and how's it going? This is Iron Fist finally back on LMS TV and making videos again. Now I know it's been a long time since I put up any sort of content, in fact more than a month since I put any video on my channel. All I can really do is apologize for that, I've had some stuff in real life to sort out and my previous computer was on its last legs and sort of incapable of editing or rendering video. But I am now back playing Planet Side 2 again with a brand new PC, very high specification gaming machine, and a new capture card as well. So I'm definitely intending to keep making videos, putting them out on YouTube, and uh, I'm going to try and work on making sure that I get out at least two to three videos a week. That is my main goal, and I'm definitely going to work on work on that and try and get it around my work schedule so that I can at least put out two to three videos a week for you guys to watch. Now, moving on to what I've got for you guys today, I have the fourth episode of my Planetside 2 Flight School series. This episode, we're going to be covering basically how to fly with a wingman, how to be a better wingman yourself, and also some basic techniques you can practice together with your wingman, or perhaps even just a friend that you have in the air, in order to help you improve your chances when facing multiple ESFs, or maybe when flying over enemy territory and trying to take out high value targets. With the current Planetside 2 Air meta game that's happening at the moment, it's becoming harder and harder to fly solo, especially on large competitive servers such as Matheson where I play. It's always good to have a buddy with you and the next technique which I'm going to show you is extremely important to learn when you're first learning to fly with a wingman and how to protect him properly as well as have him to protect you. Now we call this technique the leapfrog and I'm actually going to cut away to in-game audio so you guys can get an idea of what it's all about. Yeah, I see him. Line him up. That's fine, I got one on my six. I'm on him. Uh, he's off you, but I got one on me. Alright, turning to help. I'm breaking. He broke. I see him on you, the white one. I'm hitting him. Got a guy on me. I'm he on broke. Him. Yeah, I see him. the other one. Oh, he just jumped on his tail. Back on me. Yeah, he's off your six him. line. Line him up. I'm diving towards the tower. I got one he on broke. me though. I'm on him. Okay. Yeah, I got one on me. I'm breaking. All right, coming he back broke. to you. I see him. It's the white one. I'm hitting him. Got a guy on me. I'm breaking. Coming he back. Broke off. I'm still on him. You're clear. There's one on me though. All right, hold on. Yeah, I see him. I'm lighting him up. All right, I'm breaking. That was one of my six line. I'm on him. Yeah, I got another one on me again. Hold on. Am I clear? He broke. I think I'm clear. Yeah, I'm coming clear. back to help you. Yep. I'm on him. I got a guy on me. I'm on him. I'm breaking. I'm yeah. I see the he one back off. on New York. I'm shooting him up. Now hopefully you can get at least a basic idea of how this leapfrog technique works. It's basically the process of covering your wingman's tail while he covers yours in a constant sort of circuit round each other. Now as you can see here in this clip for example, a mozzie attacks the first reaver. The reaver's wingman then attacks the mozzie in order for him to break off his target. Another mozzie appears and begins attacking the wingman. And the first reaver that originally got attacked then swings round to cover his wingman's tail and make the other mozzie break. Now this process is a sort of long chain of events that can lead to you either making the enemy air break off you or killing them outright in the process. It's an extremely effective method, especially when flying against unorganized groups of mass air zergs, and you can effectively actually take on at least double your numbers while using this technique in the air. This technique is also extremely effective at retreating from enemy territory while being chased by enemy ESFs. Let's say for example you're, you're over enemy territory and you're running extremely low on ammo. Now what you could do is just use this tech basic technique to leapfrog back towards enemy territory, back towards a warp gate, or at least somewhere where you can grab ammo and continue the fight. Now not only is it essential to practice the basic flying mechanics of this technique, it's also extremely important to practice the voice comms which you use with each other when you're flying around. Typically we use a system of basic information which we try to relay in as short a time as possible. Now what most pilots, or what I see most pilots doing, is just yelling that, you know, I've got a scythe on my tail, I've got a mozzie on my tail, and that really, really doesn't help the guys that you're flying with, or the wingman that you're flying with, in identifying the threat and helping you. It really doesn't. What you want to practice using is perhaps the technique which we use, 
we try to call the rough base area or the rough hex, which is sort of bot bottom left above your map, the direction that your enemy is facing, as well as the rough altitude which you're at, which could be, you know, 600 meters, 700 meters. So it would sound something like, I've got a mozzie on me at Allerton Biolab, northwest 600 meters. Now what that does is it relays all the relevant information which your wingman needs in order to find you and help you out. It's also extremely important to practice telling your wingman or your outfit mates when you've got somebody on your tail, when you force somebody to break, or perhaps when you've taken down an enemy pilot so that you know how many targets you're facing. Another very useful voice comms technique which you can practice with your wingman is identifying high threat targets or identifying high value targets which you want to take out quickly and calling them and focusing them together. I see a lot of guys flying around in pairs or threes but they all end up going into battle and then shooting at different targets which sort of defeats the point of having a wingman with you in the first place because if you're all off chasing different aircraft in different directions you're not going to be able to kill anything very quickly and you're also not going to be able to cover each other properly. So the typical system we use is to dive down from the flight ceiling which is the safest place to engage enemy aircraft from and obviously identify which target we want to engage, be it an ESF, a LIB, a Galaxy, whatever, and we try to engage it together with maximum DPS, therefore taking, out, taking it out as fast as possible in order to minimize the risk to yourselves. It's very important to practice this technique in identifying which enemy you want to take out. Make sure you're specific when you're telling your wingman which enemy you want to focus so that you don't get confused in the heat of battle. Now another important thing to remember when flying with a wingman is the actual positioning of your aircraft when you're about to engage in a fight. You want to be as close to the flight ceiling as possible, if not at the flight ceiling, and you, before you dive down onto any enemy targets, such as what we're doing here, you want to check your surroundings thoroughly and make sure that your situational awareness is up to scratch. Now the last thing you want is to dive down onto an enemy aircraft and then have two more aircraft come at you from the flight ceiling from behind and dive down on top of you because that's really never going to end well for you. It's extremely important before you dive down, as I say, to check the surroundings around you, check the airspace, make sure that you can't hear any enemy aircraft engines behind you before you actually select your target and dive down onto it together. If a situation does arise where you're getting jumped by an enemy aircraft from behind, the general technique we do when flying together is if you're getting jumped to fly in evasive maneuvers, inform your wingman that you've got somebody behind you and wait until your wingman confirms that he's got the enemy aircraft in sight and ready to shoot. Once you know your wingman is ready to engage the enemy behind you, that is the time that you want to turn around on him so that you have maximum DPS on the target. If the target is coming straight at you, you turn around, you've got your gun facing him, you've got your wingman behind you, most of the time you're going to be able to kill him between the two clips of the aircraft. So it's extremely important to remember before you turn around, make sure that your wingman confirms that he's got the enemy in his sights, he knows where you are, and he's ready to engage him. Now do bear in mind though that when you're flying in crowded airspace, or in a friendly group of aircraft, or even just with a singular wingman, your spatial awareness definitely needs to be up to scratch and you need to have a good idea of where your friendly aircraft are in relation to you. Now the worst thing that can happen is when you're diving down to engage an enemy target or even just when you're outnumbered, you end up flying into your wingman, you fly into friendly aircraft, you're either going to blow up or you're going to lose the majority of your life um, and then you're going to be pretty much useless to everybody so you really want to try and avoid that at all costs. Always keep in mind where your friendlies are and get a rough idea of what kind of attack line they're taking on enemy aircraft so that you can select a slightly different attack route onto the enemy target and make sure that you don't end up colliding when you're trying to gun him down. Now most collisions tend to occur once you've killed the enemy target and their debris is in the air. When you get close to a target, you kill him, the debris flies up, Both air all your friendly aircraft are of course trying to afterburn or vertical flight out of the way of the debris and they tend to fly into each other a lot at that point in time. So always tend to have a rough idea of where you're going to swerve out the way to avoid the debris or even better, keep yourself a safe distance back so that you don't have to do it in the first place. Now lastly, I want to talk about target selection in enemy territory or in a target rich environment. As you can see here in this clip, the most important targets to take down first would be the enemy ESFs as they're the most dangerous to you most of the time. 
You want to focus down any sides, mozzies, or reavers that you see in the air. Make sure that they're dead. Make sure that there isn't any trying to sneak up behind you before you attack high value targets like libs and galaxies. The reason why most air combos get taken down is because they try and engage a big target, like I say, such as a lib or a galaxy, and they end up having enemy ESFs come up behind them and take them down while they're trying to fight two things at once. So again, it's all about situational awareness. Make sure that you check the surrounding area, there's no enemy ESFs around, and then you're safe to engage high value targets such as libs. Again, it's important to remember that you should try and focus down these targets together rather than splitting off into two separate groups to take down the targets. Because once you get split up and then you get engaged by more ESFs, it's going to be extremely hard to then find each other in the middle of all of it and help each other out. On a final note, it's extremely important to remember not to get tunnel vision when trying to engage a target, specifically ESFs. If you end up chasing a ESF that's barrel rolling and evading to try and get away from you, you're going to kill him but you're then going to be 5 or 6 hexes on the map away from your wingman and away from safety. So any number of things could happen to you there, you could get engaged by multiple enemy ESFs, you could get hit by flak, and help is a long way away from you. You then of course got to relay all that information to your wingman which takes even longer. So sometimes it's better just to let that guy get away. I mean you can always kill him when he comes back to try and get you anyway. So don't get too bad tunnel vision. So that just about wraps up this episode of the Planetside 2 Flight School. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope this technique helps you out when flying around on Araxis. I'd appreciate it if you comment, rate and subscribe this video to let me know how I can improve my videos for future content. Once again, thank you for watching. Until next time, take it easy and have a good one.